Hey, what's going on guys? This is Glenn from Awakening, and we are going to talk through the layout of the Behringer Wing mixing console today. This is gonna be a really brief overview of the console itself, and is not gonna to dive too far into any of the extra functions or really any details. So it's just gonna give you a brief overview if you've never seen this thing before and you want to get familiarized with how this console is laid out. Let's dive right in. So in the top left-hand corner, this gray box is gonna be your monitoring and talkback level where you can adjust your phone output level, the talk level, and your monitor levels. Moving down, you'll see that there are a bunch of faders all across the board. It's mainly separated into three main sections, one, two, and three. On the left-hand side here, we have our channel inputs. And so this is gonna be where you primarily adjust the faders for your channels. In the middle here, we have our bus faders. And so you'll use those faders for buses. And on the right-hand side, you notice that you'll have four more faders that is primarily gonna be used for your master faders, okay? What you'll also notice is that there are a bunch of buttons here, bank buttons on the left side of each of those fader sections. From those bank buttons, you can access different banks. So on the left-hand side here, you'll notice you don't just have 12 faders, you can access 13 through 24 on another page, or you can access 25 through 36 on the following page. Now, what's cool is that you, don't, you aren't just limited to input channel faders. You can also access your bus master from the left-hand side here, your auxes, and two different customizable user channels. In the middle here, we have our buses, as I mentioned, but same situation as the input channel faders, you can access all different kinds of faders from this bus section, including your DCA, your matrices, your aux ins, and more user signals. On the right hand side here, you also have four faders with more bank buttons, and this is gonna allow you to access your matrices, your DCA, your master, and even your bus master and more user signals. So highly customizable here. Moving on up the console, we have a great box here. This is gonna be our channel processing section and it allows you to adjust filters, gates, compressors based off of a selected channel. Moving over, we have our four channel section that gives us just more controls with gains, gates, compressors, uh, more globally though, not based on a selected channel. Moving down, we have another great box. This is gonna be split into two sections. The top is the custom controls and the bottom is gonna be your transport and mute groups and show controls. Moving on up, we have this big LED screen. I'm gonna cut a little bit closer in with the camera so that we can get a closer look and I'll walk through a few of the layout pieces for you there. Great, so now that we have a closer look at the LED screen, what you'll notice is that there's a few buttons on the left-hand side here. Up at the top, we have a home button. This is gonna take you to the home page of a selected channel. You can also press and hold this for three seconds and it's gonna lock the console just in case you wanna make sure nobody messes with anything when you need to step away from the console. Go ahead and press it for three more seconds and it will unlock the console again. Moving down, we have an effects button. This is gonna show you your effects, meters, all of your meters, routing, all the ins and outs of the console, setup, and your library, which is going to help you load presets, scenes, or any sort of snapshots that you've saved. Let's go back up to the home button here, and we can see the home page of our selected channel. You'll notice that I've selected the kick low channel. This is our first channel on the console. And you see a bunch of information, but what I want you to do is to ignore all that and just focus on these gray boxes on the left-hand side here for now. What you'll notice is that we have the home box selected, and if you move down on the boxes, you will select a channel input box, okay? So this is where you are going to select your input channel, and it will allow you to decide which input you want to come through your channel. Now, these boxes are stacked on top of each other because the signal actually waterfalls down through them in this order. So you have your input, and then it waterfalls down into a few different audio processors, the first of which being a gate, an EQ, a compressor, and an insert. And so the signal will start up here, you'll patch it in, and then adjust the gain, and it will waterfall down this way. Once it reaches this 
gray line here, this is actually gonna be a fader volume. When you turn up the fader, the blue line is going to go up accordingly. And so you're used to seeing your faders go up and down. This is left to right. And that signal will then be sent out. You also have an insert that you can apply post fader and you can send to the master or the main sends um, on this bottom tab or just the pan left and right. And at the very bottom, you have your sends. So that's the general overview of the left-hand side of the LED screen within a selected channel strip. And what you'll notice, if you look on the right-hand side, you see a lot of the same things. And so you have an input box here. This is gonna have your kick sub input. This is your selected gain and trim. Um, it'll also tell you uh, your EQ shape your mains, if it's being sent to any of the mains, right now it's not being sent to anything, and you have your filters and your overall fader level. And so that's gonna be corresponding to the fader within the input channel fader bank. We're gonna have a few more adjustments within this home page LED screen. You can adjust your icon or the color of the icon, you can change the name, or you can apply a tag for a DCA group. That's the general overview. There are a lot more buttons on this LED screen, but again, this video is just a beginner video for you to get familiar with the console right off the bat. Thanks so much for joining me on this overview video of the Behringer Wing. I hope that you found it helpful. I hope that you learned a little bit more. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.